So that's where Beer 30 is a little bit different is it's broadcasted out to everyone, which actually in the state of Georgia as a brewery, you can't do that. You can't broadcast where people can buy your beer. Amanda here, and welcome to episode 99 of Great Beer Adventure. Today, we do something a bit different and hand things over to our lead correspondent, Jack Butcher from Georgia. If you are interested in being a correspondent here on Great Beer Adventure, be sure to listen till the end when I'll give you some more details. Take it away, Jack. Hi, this is Jack from the Great Beer Adventure, and I'm sitting here with Chaz from Beer 30, uh, an app that you can download on Android and iOS. And first of all, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Uh, and so why don't we start out, and you go ahead and uh, start, tell us a little bit about yourself so that we can uh, know who we're talking to and what we're talking about today. Yeah, sure. So I'm originally from Chicago, or just outside of Chicago, moved to Georgia in about 2009, started doing some web development around that same time um in the last three or four years got into some app development pays better absolutely (laughs) (laughs) um and then kind of in my spare free time usually try to come up with something to kind of just enhance my skills the way i learn best and that's kind of how part of where beer 30 came from was this kind of just a side project that i started that I saw a lot of potential in, so I wanted to really put some effort and pursue it. Okay. And now, now, where did you originally get the idea for this? Because, you know, the, like we talked about before, I mean, you know, there's there's several apps out there that, that you know, it, just looking at it from face value is there's tons of them. Yeah. You know, tons of, of find me a beer apps type yep. of things. So where did you get this idea? So the idea came from, so like, let's say Untapped, for example. Mm-hmm. Untapped at the time that I came up with this idea didn't have any way for you to find specific beers you can see what people have checked into but if you were looking for a specific beer and no one checked into it you weren't going to find it right so their their content was very user driven and it was only if people checked into it and that's kind of where i saw the issue and so where this came to me was i had you know going to local bars and restaurants most of them in georgia have a, a decent craft beer selection so they'll have a couple right. of rotating tabs mm-hmm. the problem that i kept running into was uh their chalkboard that they use or the paper that they printed out was mm-hmm. always out of date right so the server would come over and i'm like yo can i see your beer uh, your beer menu mm-hmm. and then upon looking on i'm like oh that looks good let me try that and they're like mm-hmm. oh well, we don't have it we just ran out two days ago right <laughs> well, then why don't you print a new menu? <laughs> and then furthermore a lot of times the bartenders have no idea or not the bartenders but the servers have no idea any information about the beer mm-hmm. so i'll see like a tap hand i'm like oh what's the terrapin beer you have over there like oh, i have no idea right and then i have to go check and i'm like oh okay i'll try that and like oh right. well, actually we're out of it yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a very frustrating experience and i was like there's got to be a better way to go about this and so that's kind of where the idea came from so how did you actually approach that in, in terms of actually developing the app out and figuring out well let, let's back up a little bit and then and let me ask this question is this app developed basically for uh, just the consumer end or is it developed also for the consumer and the business as well to use in tangent it's uh it's for both so okay. there's two uh separate apps okay there's a beer 30 for business app which is obviously for the business and mm-hmm. then there's just beer 30 which is for the consumer okay on the business end kind of the way the process goes is i will go set them up i will literally just ask them any beer they plan on carrying ever mm-hmm. whether they have it currently or not mm-hmm. just whatever they plan on ordering I will stock all of that into their backlog. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, it just becomes a toggle switch for every beer to either Mm -hmm. say you have it or you don't have it. Right. So um, as they place orders, they can add more beers. As they swap out kegs, they can just turn them on and off. Okay. And then that's a real-time update so that the consumer Mm -hmm. now knows exactly what you have as soon as you have it. There's no printing out a menu. There's no rewriting stuff on the chalkboard. Mm-hmm. Like it eliminates that entire process. I, I like that. I really do because you know there's a there's a, a growler shop right down the road from my house, and at that growler shop when they originally first opened up, uh, they had these three uh, about four or five. 50 60 inch flat panel tvs that were hooked up to a a computer in the back room and they were using this program that they could basically just 
do the same thing that, that you're talking about. Yep. But the problem then was after a month, month and a half, that program was just not doing anything for them. And so it would show outdated stuff. It yep. would show things and it was it would make it more difficult for them. So what they ended up doing was taking those things off and put a chalkboard up. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and and I was talking to the owner and, and he says, you know, basically it's just it is what it is. I mean it, it's a lot easier for me to get a ladder and some uh some chalk and, and clean the whole board and, and just replace what, what we changed out. Yeah, if it's not providing anything in addition to just showing what you have mm-hmm. and then at that point it's not broadcasted out like they have to get mm-hmm. there in order to see it anyway. Right, right. So that's where Beer 30 is a little bit different is Mm -hmm. it's broadcasted out to everyone. Exactly. Which actually in the state of Georgia as a brewery, you can't do that. You can't broadcast where people can buy your beer. Right. So this kind of bypasses that. So you you can tell the brewery, all right, we'll tell your distributors Mm -hmm. to tell their clients to get on Beer 30 and then people will know exactly where to get your beer. Exactly. Exactly. Now, have you you thought about, and you and I talked about, you know, going basically door to door to these bars and things like that, which... In and of itself is a fantastic yeah. job. <laughs> Taxing and long hours, but it's 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 fun. Yeah, it would <laughs> be fun. Yeah. Um, but have you also thought about more about maybe possibly going to directly to brewers and developing this out to to them and, and explaining the benefits to them on that end? Yeah. So I, I've put some thought into it, and where I think the sweet spot is is the sales team for distributors. Mm-hmm. Because those guys already have these relationships with these bars, and mm-hmm. ultimately they're the ones who decide where the beer goes. Right, exactly. So if I can get in with them and say, you know, as you're, you know, pushing this particular brewer onto this particular establishment, also throw in your mm-hmm. thirty. Right, right. And that's kind of going to be the, like I said, the sweet spot of getting the most bang for your buck. Right, right. So, so um, when we're when we're talking about the app and it, it's designed and, and built for both the, the consumer end and also for the business end. As far as the consumer goes, how does the interface actually work and how does it display? Like, I know that, you know, with the app that I use, I'm going to search and search and search and search, and then I'm going to go, okay, well, this is over here, and yeah. then I'll go over there, and then it's not there. <laughs> yeah, so, and that, that's kind of the problem that I think that Beer 30 solves is the going there and it not being there. Okay. It is a little bit dependent on the location keeping their taps up to date Mm -hmm. but similar to just about any other beer related app you also check into beers Mm -hmm. so you can check into the place and if they don't have the beer you give them a one star and you can make a comment that says came here for they didn't have it yeah um but as far as the interface for searching for beer there is a a primary search and then you type in let's say the beer that you're looking for Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what it does is it pulls up uh, another screen, and in that screen, it tells you information about the beer. It tells mm-hmm. you the ABVs, uh, mm-hmm. IBUs, mm-hmm. F- food pairings. It tells you about right. the style of beer. Okay. And then in addition to that, at the bottom of that, it'll tell you everywhere you can get it. Okay. All Any right. place that's within your search radius that has mm-hmm. it currently on tap. Great. That was my next question, is if you could put in some type of search radius yep. because... You know, <laughs> yep. I don't want to be driving north Georgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but some people might be willing to for the right beer. That's true. That's true. So it's it's a it's a, a variable that you can change. So mm-hmm. like you may like, oh, for right now, I just want to look within 10 miles. Okay. But then you're like, but if I'm searching for the specific beer, I kind of want to look a little further out because I drive an extra 20 minutes to get it. Okay. All right. So, you know, since this is a, a beer podcast and uh, and that's that's the whole theme of, of, of how we how we met today. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about some of your favorite beers, some of the things that that, that, that kind of got you involved in beer in the first place, um, and, and also, you know, just to kind of get, you know, a better understanding of, of what you're trying to actually accomplish and, and help the consumer and the business with throughout the whole entire thing. Yeah. So let's talk about beer, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so... First and foremost, and this is a very general, fun, easy question, all right? So don't stress too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, because of, of any beer nut, uh, hophead, whatever you want to call us, everybody's got their, their rolling, seems like every single month is the new style of beer is their favorite. Yeah. So right now, what, where, where are you at? Uh, I've been consistently on IPAs and double IPAs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm almost like the more bitter, the better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, you, have you delved too much into the ESPs? I have not. Uh, there's a fantastic one based out of Alabama you should definitely try. Yeah, okay. Um, but I, I actually, me and my, my wife just got back from a little vacation out, and we were going somewhere in Georgia 
um, but we stayed in Alabama. It was that close. And so I took some time to, to go try to find some new beers I've never tried before, and uh, I found this fantastic, fantastic ESP. And that thing was, I'm telling you, I loved it. Really? Uh, and my wife absolutely hated it. <laughs> Music, all that goes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that IPAs, I, I would have to say, have you, have you tried the Sweetwater Hash? Yes. Gosh, that Love thing it. will punch you in the back yeah. of the throat. Yeah, won't you can't it? drink too many of them. I, but yeah. It comes in that big <laughs> bottle, and I, I've only gotten about halfway through it, and yeah. I'm, I'm like, "This thing's going in the garbage." Yeah, that, that's a sipping <laughs> one. You don't <laughs> really, you, know, you don't drink that one too fast. <laughs> so, as far as um, the the beers that kind of got you into this, like, what, where, where, where did that come from? Because it, it takes a, a certain type of person, I believe, for for them to be into beer in the first place, but also more importantly, want to create something for that space that isn't a brewery yeah i would say the defining moment for me for craft beer was i used to live in swanee and every year swanee has a swanee beer fest fantastic beer fest yep yep and i went there and i tried a bunch of beers and i was like this is awesome yeah i was like this is what beer can taste like (laughs) this is amazing (laughs) yeah and and after um tasting a lot of different craft beers i'm like there's definitely more to beer than just your pilsners Mm -hmm. and so that's when i really got into it started Mm -hmm. exploring more craft beers and Mm -hmm. And then I had a strong IPA, and at first I was like, well, that's a bit much. And then, like, second sip, I was like, well, actually, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once you get past that first, yeah. that first punch, it, it, it's delicious. So at, at, that, at that stage, were, were you working with another company and, and, and doing something else? or? Uh, yeah, so i um, always been into web development. Like mm-hmm. I said, just recently got into app development. So at the time, I think I was actually just finishing college. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't had like a, a major job at that point, so it was just like my first big boy job, mm-hmm. right? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I had I was like barely into beer, barely into web and app development, mm-hmm. so it was all pretty new at that point. Okay, and then so so you had this let's say a stroke of genius, yeah, right. <laughs> so at that point, was it was it more of a, a slow start, kind of just getting the ball rolling and trying to understand how it was going to actually develop out, or or was it? A stroke of genius, and you just started that night, and 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 the rest is history. Um, well, for beer thirty, mm-hmm. that didn't come until a couple years later. Okay, at that point, I was just getting into craft beer, mm-hmm. and then the more and more I started getting into craft beer, the more and more I started looking for craft beer. Right. Which made me realize that there was a problem when you're looking for craft beer. Right, right. Which led to the development of that. There's an opening in the market yeah. for you, <laughs> specifically designed for you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that experience led me to where I am today. Okay, all right. So as far as the the app that, that, that you're developing, uh, first and foremost, we, we already touched on the fact that it's an Android, iOS, things yep. like that. What was the process like getting to that stage? Yeah, so if there was one defining moment that I left from a bar because I asked for two beers and they didn't have it. And I was like, I'm just, I'm not going to keep asking you for beer that you don't have. Right. So I left and I went home and I'm like, there's got to be a better way. So I just went on a whiteboard and I'm like, what can I possibly do mm-hmm. to make this easy on them, not break their workflow mm-hmm. as far as a business, mm-hmm. but still provide something that's good for the, the end user. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I came up with, you know, as little amount of work as possible on their end. So mm-hmm. the, the most work that they'll ever have to do is the initial setup, which is adding all of their beers. Mm-hmm. At that point, it's um, whenever you order new beer that's currently not in your inventory, you'd mm-hmm. have to add it to your inventory. But it's as simple as searching for the brewery, mm-hmm. and then it brings up a list of all the beers that they have, right. and you just tap it and it adds it to your okay. inventory. So it's like super simple. Okay. So that's that's kind of what my goal was for the business side was to make it as streamlined as possible because mm-hmm. they have nothing to lose and everything to gain, but I also didn't want to throw a wrench until, because if I, if it's costing them time, it's costing them money. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's kind of how I came up with that end of it. And for the consumer side, I actually did a completely different version of this a year ago, mm-hmm. did a beta test, got a bunch of information and data from it and then revamped it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that the product that it is today is a hundred times better than it was a year ago. So on on that uh, on that interface that the that the person actually uses and, and things like that, it's a it's, it's a clean interface and yep. and it's as simple as you know searching for things. But also, does it also have the feature of you know if you drive up to a place and it says, hey, by the way, this is the beer list. As far as like geolocation, like if you yeah. got to an exact mm-hmm. place, uh, it does not. 
it does get your location and it mm-hmm. brings up places that are near you and it's in right. order by distance. So okay. if you're at a place, it's going to be it's a first towards on the, the top. List. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but it doesn't give you an exact geolocation. Like when you walk in the door, it says this is right. that tablet. But what you can do is, um, let's say you're visiting a city that you hadn't been to before. Mm-hmm. You can set a watch list mm-hmm. for a specific beer. So let's say you were in Chicago and you wanted a Chicago style or a very specific beer that's only in Chicago mm-hmm. or in the Midwest. You can search for that beer at that beer to a watch list. And then when you get within your search radius, it will send you a push notification that says, hey, that beer you're looking for is available at this place. Right, right. So it does do that. Now, now you, you talked about star ratings before, yep. um, and you know if a, a beer is on that person on that on that bar or or gastro pub or right. whatever, if it, if the beer is on the list on the app, but it's not actually there, you know you can give a, a one star or whatever. And then, and if you do anything less than I think three stars, it asks you why you gave why? it such yeah. right yeah because you can't just throw one star yeah, out there and just walk like, no, away yeah <laughs> no, one star for you <laughs> but with that is, is there a search function where um you can say hey Filter. look i only want to I, I don't want any of the one stars i don't want the two stars the three stars i want the fours and fives like if i was going out to chicago it'd be almost like you know if i'm traveling for business or something and I go to Chicago or L.A. or, you know, God forbid, Texas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I go out to that part and I don't know anybody. I don't know anything about the area. Is there a, a way that I can just simply just scroll through my phone and go, I want to go to these restaurants here because this is the average user rating? Yeah, so um, it's kind of a combination of things. And this is something I haven't quite mastered yet Mm -hmm. because I want users to have the ability to rate not only the beer, but the establishment. Right. So that you can say the beer was great. The service sucked. Mm -hmm. Right. So but without giving the user seven screens to have to go through just for a check in. Oh, yeah. 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 So as it stands now, it's just about the beer specifically. Mm -hmm. But going down the line, I'm still trying to figure out a way to work that in so that it's both. Okay. But again, not make it super daunting on the user where mm-hmm. it's like, I just want to enjoy my beer. I'm sick of doing this. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do all that. Yeah. So as as far as the, the area of the market that we talked about before, which is tons of beer apps, what is the one thing that you really feel like that this does differently than all the rest of, uh, of that area? Yeah. So on the consumer side, I think that the design is a bit cleaner and easier to use than some of the other apps. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of time and energy Mm -hmm. making sure that Mm -hmm. it was usable and people knew exactly where to go. Mm -hmm. You got great stickers. Uh, Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And then in addition to that, and it's kind of a variable because I'm putting a, a bit of faith into the establishment, but as long as they keep their list up to date, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a knock out the park easily and and no one else is really doing that. Right. It's kind of just dependent on go find this and it might be over there or it might not be. Yeah, And and it's very user driven and I'm trying Mm -hmm. to get it from the source driven. So, so where does, where does that, you know, cause the, cause the only problem that I'm seeing with, with that type of development and I'm not an app developer, (laughs) I'm lucky I got this computer up and running right now. Um, but the only problem that I kind of see with that process is that there seems to be there. There might be some type of gaps because, you know, you can go downtown Atlanta and you'll have seven pubs in a row, you know, seven bars in a row. And if if that one beer you're looking for is in that one bar that's not on your app, you know, how does somebody find it at that point? You go in there and you tell them you guys need to get this. Okay. And then um, as far as like the motivation for businesses to keep customers is I also sell them analytics. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's, I mean, that's just dollars to them. Okay. So I will, I'd sell them information about people in their area, about beers they're looking for, beers they check mm-hmm. into the most, and then like just full on robust analytics charts, the full works. Okay. And then that is available to them as long as they maintain a good rating. Okay. As soon as you drop below a good rating, then obviously you need to do some mm-hmm. more work. And I'm not going to keep providing this to you if you're making the app look bad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you definitely don't want your business to suffer because of their business. Right. Right. So as far as um, the app goes and, and, and understanding those limitations, because it, it's got to be a, an amazingly hard experience just to get to the point to where you are now. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that is not an, e- an easy experience. Um, I had a friend that created an app several years ago, and he got it from my idea. 
But I was just like, this needs to happen. Yeah. Why does this not happen? <laughs> um, I'm an avid DVD collector. And, and so I, I was talking to him, and, and he knew how to do it. So he made it. And it was this fantastic app where you just scan the barcode, and it gets added to your shelf. Nice. And then, uh, and then as you're out shopping for DVDs or something like that, you can just scan the barcode, and it tells you if you have it or not. Oh, nice. Simple, yeah. easy. But you're talking to a guy that has 4,000-plus DVDs. Yeah, I don't want to go through and I'd, scan all And those. I've got a, literally a tub <laughs> of, of DVDs I've, I've bought, and you know, it's got a big sign on the front when my friends come over or family comes over. I'm like, look through there. They're free <laughs> because yeah, I've already got four them. of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but that app literally didn't go anywhere. I think currently it's sitting at maybe 500 downloads, and there was no marketing involved. It right. was just he was he knew how to do it, and it solved the problem for me. So he kind of just built it for me. And yeah. It was an easy build. It was all based <laughs> off of Amazon. So you know he uh, he kind of developed it out and, and did all that. But in the end, how do you actually market a business like this and an idea like this um, without actually having a physical? You know, this is what I want to sell you, yeah. and then you take it home. So, like I said, on the business side, it's it's fairly easy because I sell them. What I market to them is you get all these analytics, mm-hmm. and these are going to mean dollars mm-hmm. to you. On the consumer side, it's also easy because mm-hmm. you're always, I mean, people are looking for specific beers. And even if you're not looking for a specific beer, if you're just in a place, you want to know what they have mm-hmm. and then get information about it. That I mean, that's, that's kind of the, it kind of markets itself. Yeah. It was kind of an easy niche. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, I guess like the, 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 the problem I'm kind of, I'm kind of having is, is just understanding that marketing platform. Just keep in mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> but more importantly, who do you approach first with this type of idea? That is the problem is the, you know, chicken before the egg sort of thing. Exactly. Where you That's don't a want a bunch of it. people on it and there's no bars, but you don't want a bunch of bars because they're going to like, well, you don't have any people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of been a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of trying to tackle it all at once. Mm-hmm. The plan that I've come up with is to uh, kind of just get a street team mm-hmm. and have people go talk to bars on my behalf, and then I can handle marketing online and, right. and drive the traffic that way. Okay. So what are some of the ideas as far as marketing to the people who are going to download it and search beers? Where, where, where are you going with that? So the idea now is kind of just start with my own network of people and say, hey, this is the app that I built, and then have them share that and say, this is the app my friend built. Uh, also do some targeted ads, like Facebook, probably some Google um, ads. I also at one point was doing uh, like a kickoff event. So the the business plan that I have for this is I'm expanding city by city. Mm-hmm. So um, in per city, I was kind of going to have a kickoff party to say this app is now available in your city. Right. So and that will draw huge crowds and and my goal with that is to get sponsors for that so I don't have to pay a whole lot of that out of pocket. Yeah. Um and just kind of just have like just a party, really just a craft mm-hmm. beer party and give away some like swag and stuff like that and that that's kind of my plan and it works best in summer. Right. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Nobody so, wants to come out in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in Georgia. I'm kind of ramping up for that now. Where I can get in, so like the first few bars that I'll get set up, I'm like, oh, by the way, I would like to have a kickoff party once we get, you know, X amount of bars signed up or growler shop, whatever, signed mm-hmm. up. And then just have that as just a full, full event. And mm-hmm. then that's kind of part of the business plan with Beer 30 because mm-hmm. another thing that the business gets is they get what I call a brand ambassador. Mm-hmm. And that brand ambassador is that business's point of contact. So that is like their one person. If they have any issues, mm-hmm. questions, concerns about the app, they like you know what would be awesome if it did this. Right. Send it to that person. It goes right up the channel. You don't have to talk to different people at different times. Okay. And then that brand ambassador is also um, my point of contact. Going back to them and say, hey, we want to do this event, or going the other way. I'm like, hey, we'd like to do a partnership event coming right. from the bar, going to Beer Thirty. Okay. So how how big do you do you see this actually getting where do I, you see it i think that with the growth of craft beer in the last couple of years i think the last time i checked it was a few billion dollar industry easy <laughs> <laughs> easy <laughs> so um there's definitely a market for it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and it seems to only be growing mm-hmm. um so I, I think that it could get really big my goal is to start off in atlanta kind of 
do the southeast mm-hmm. and then obviously go to places like Denver, Portland, mm-hmm. Maine, mm-hmm. and kind of just hit the Maine. Like Birmingham actually has a really good craft yeah. beer scene. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so they're also on the list and kind of just hit those major big craft beer mm-hmm. scene uh, cities. And then from there, grow out to some of the less involved craft beer cities. Smallville, Kansas. Yeah, yeah Smallville, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as the... the where you're at right now, how many cities are actually in right now, currently? So I am starting in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, was I've just chopped that up as a beta test. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of holes in the app, but I let everybody know up front, I'm like, this is, you know, you are testing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Use it your own risk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, this year, I'll be focusing on Atlanta. Mostly until, like, midsummer, I'll be focusing on Atlanta. Once I feel like Atlanta's at a good, stable spot where it can grow organically, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to move to Birmingham and Asheville, uh, and then I'm going to tackle those two cities. Hopefully, at that point, I can expand the team a little bit and not have to do it all on my own. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, after that, I'm going to start going to the bigger craft beer scene mm-hmm. cities. So I, I think it has potential to be very big. Okay, so 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 Atlanta is kind of your main source of yeah, because I can, out I can all the do this. And- I mean day in and day out because i live here so right. I, I mean there's a there's a pretty good scene here oh yeah despite the laws yeah mm-hmm. despite, <laughs> yeah, despite the, the laws, laws there's still a, a good fantastic scene, here. scene yeah so um so yeah so like i have all of my free time i can spend here and i don't have to like travel and try to make connections and i have good relationships with people here mm-hmm. and can build off of those right so yeah so atlanta was my beta test city and they mm-hmm. will be my first city okay all right all right so um, you talked about moving to the North Carolina area and out to Alabama and obviously Florida. You know, what what would it actually take to get this completely blown up, you know, countrywide, which is obviously where you probably want to take it. Yeah. You don't want to keep just the South. So what what would need to happen in terms of of, of your plan to, to make sure that it hits all of those target markets that, that, that you want to hit? Yeah, the I mean, the driving force with this is the number of places in a demographic that I can get to sign up. So the number of growler shops, the number of um, bars, brew pubs, whatever, the number of, like, if I can get a good number of that in any city, I don't I don't care what city it right, is. Right, right. As long as, you know, it's worth it to be there. Oh, at yeah, least absolutely. for the business side. Yeah. Yeah, if I can get to that point where I can get, enough signups in an area Mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the driving force behind this okay all right so you know would your business change uh would your plan change as far as rolling out the different cities if say all of a sudden you got a lot of hits out of let's say seattle yeah you know if 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 you start getting started seeing a whole lot of numbers of hits coming from seattle obviously we're going to go there first yeah. so you know is that distance for you uh, an, an issue at all or no so um the way the app works is it's specific to the united states for now mm-hmm. um but yeah but it can be anywhere in the mm-hmm. united states and not be a difference to me literally everything lives in the cloud right so. <laughs> uh, absolutely yeah we all do <laughs> yeah. so yeah so i could scale for seattle without an issue okay okay and yeah and all i would have to do at that point is have a team or build a team mm-hmm. to manage the Seattle area. Right. So, I mean, what, what would be some of those signifiers for you as far as trying to understand, you know, that you're talking to Simpleton here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, what would be some of those signifiers for you to kind of go, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't go here first. Maybe we should go there first instead. Yeah. So um, the way I picked the cities was I literally just did, you know, a bunch of research on best craft beer cities. Mm-hmm. And then I went to all of those cities and I looked mm-hmm. at their craft beer mm-hmm. scene. I was like, yeah, most of these things are correct. These are good scenes for craft mm-hmm. beer. And mostly it was because I can scale in those areas and still manage it easily from mm-hmm. Georgia. Yeah. That was kind of the deciding factor. Was right. I want to stay in this area. So mm-hmm. if I have to go, some people are old school and they want to see me face to face. And if they mm-hmm. need me to go to Birmingham, that's right. a two hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if I have to go to Seattle, that's a little bit further. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, four. <laughs> so that was kind of the, the driving force for that is accessibility. Okay. Okay. So, you know, and you, you touched on this a little bit, but you know, um, why did you pick Atlanta to, to start the rollout here? I mean, obviously, because you live here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I know that despite contrary beliefs, uh, Georgia is actually a very big 
tech central place, but why Atlanta as opposed to places like Silicon Valley or out in California or even Seattle or where yeah. these trending type of apps can really just kind of take off overnight? Well, but you kind of touched on it. Atlanta has a really good tech scene too mm-hmm. that uh, I think is becoming more apparent now than it was in the past. But um, yeah, I think that the potential for growth is just as good here as it mm-hmm. is in california it'll cost a fraction of it right that, so. that, that is true that is true it is cheaper in the south than california <laughs> so and that's that's kind of why as far as the app is concerned i didn't really try to push it in in the california bay area mm-hmm. because it just would have cost me way more like let's say you know i wanted to have headquarters there it's gonna be three hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollars for a small building oh yeah get that same building here for 60 grand yeah so <laughs> that's true that is true so as far as like uh staff and, 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 and things like that, you know, because obviously you have to have, with, with this type of app, uh, the way that I'm understanding how you're building it and things like that, you're doing a lot more legwork than the typical app developer would do. Right. Because the typical app developer would, um, it, my understanding is that they would basically get together that beta test of an idea that they had, and then they would release it and then let people test it out for a while and then do you know, basically like a soft release and a hard release yep. and then let it go from there and market where they need to market. But they're not actually going out and doing all the things that you're doing. Right. So what type of staff do you need to actually get to that next level from where you're at right now? Yeah, so in addition to the street team that I need to go out and get people signed up, the only other main staff would be those brand ambassadors because they mm-hmm. have to be the point of contact mm-hmm. for um, and then I'm still messing with numbers to try to figure out how many establishments I can get to one person mm-hmm. to be as lean as possible. Right. And then, I mean, I probably could use some help in marketing. Mm-hmm. I've designed all of the, my own stuff. Mm-hmm. I've done all of the marketing for that. I've done all of the T-shirts. So I'm kind of like le- wearing like 20 hats at this point. <laughs> yeah. So it would be nice to pass some hats <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, welcome to the small business world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those hats are going to be continual. Yep. You know, after you get rid of this one, you're going to pick this one up from yep. over here. <laughs> so, yeah. So in addition to app development, I did the website, I did the e-commerce store, and then I'm also still the sole person going and talking to bars and doing all of the marketing. Mm-hmm. So you so, are the branded uh, uh, ambassador now? Yep. So do you, do you have people on your staff now working, or is it just basically you? and? It's basically me. I have a couple of friends that I can lean on when mm-hmm. I need it. Mm-hmm. It would be like, hey, can you send out this, there's a list of these people I need yeah. to email. Right. Uh, just because that's just going to take more time for me mm-hmm. and I can be doing something way more productive than yeah. sending emails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long have you been at it again? Um, so uh, last year was the first release, the beta release. Mm-hmm. I released that to a small group of people. It was about 50 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I let them use it for about six months. And then I collected a bunch of data from that. I um, got some feedback from them from that. And then I spent another six months ramping it back up. I, I basically wrote an entire new code base. I just stripped away everything that I had and started over. Got a little bit into infrastructure. Now everything runs off of Amazon Web Servers. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, because um, before everything was on a GoDaddy server and it was mm. super slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, now I've, I've ramped it up. I've, I've gone about it the right way. Mm-hmm. I got push notifications the right way. Mm-hmm. It's built inside of Cordova, which before it was built with just phone gap build, which was mm-hmm. a very lightweight way of doing it. So right. with Cordova I have a little more control over how it reacts mm-hmm. to people. Mm-hmm. So like this app is just a hundred times better than the previous. The previous was literally just a beta test app. Mm-hmm. And this one's more of a production value app. And it's kind of like trying to compete with the big boys, getting a level coming out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And um, making scaling a lot easier. Okay, okay. So where are you at um, in terms of uh, uh, actual app downloads now? And, you know, are you seeing an uptick anywhere? Or, um, or Not so much because the beta test was me selecting 50 people mm-hmm. and those were kind of the only people that knew about it. Right. I still haven't done a ton of marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, every once in a while, I'll post something on Facebook or Instagram. So I have a few friends who are like, oh, I had my cousin download it. They love it. I'm like, great, but like, maybe tell me before you do that because I wasn't quite ready. Right. So I put it in the store because I figured no one knew about it yet. And I just yeah. want to get it there so when I'm ready, I can market it and everything's already there. You can still play around wait. in yeah. the playground a little bit yeah, before Yeah, I don't have to wait for any approvals. Like, So as soon as I'm ready, just flip a switch and good to go. Right. So yeah, so that's kind of where it is now is there's not a ton of well the ios downloads there's none because i'm still waiting on apple to approve mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. um android is a new thing this year there was no android last year but android has 
think about 30, 35 downloads okay. and I haven't told anyone. Right. So <laughs> Right, right. So right now it's just basically a word of mouth type of thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you know, what is your next phase? Uh, so next steps are um, I'm printing a ton of T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to market the store more than the app mm-hmm. um, because the store will generate revenue and mm-hmm. then I can pay people to push the app. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, next phase would be to push out these T-shirts and other merchandise, the growlers and all mm-hmm. of that stuff, uh, while at the same time trying to come up with a better rollout plan. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think the best solution is going to be to partner with one of the better-known Atlanta craft beer places mm-hmm. and um, try to get some sponsors and have a kickoff event. And Absolutely. I think that that's going to be the best way to okay. get the name out for the app. Have you thought about, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be your marketing team yeah. here, okay? And just throw some <laughs> ideas at you. But have you thought about going and setting up a booth at a, at a beer fest? I have. Mm-hmm. The problem is that takes me away from everything else. That's true. <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> that's, where, that, that, that's, that's where the slackies come out. Yeah. Right? You need more slackies. <laughs> because the other thing that I'm thinking about doing, and I tried to do it last year, and I just kind of fell off on it, and I think it's too late to do it this year. Cause I think uh, it, was on, it was in March, so, but Swanee Beer Fest mm-hmm. could really use Beer 30. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the last time I went to Swanee Beer Fest, I stood in line for like 35 minutes and mm-hmm. got up there, and they didn't have the beer that I stood in line for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be handy to go to a beer, you know, and I didn't even think about that aspect of yeah. it. Was, you know, you go to a beer fest or something like and that. And that would be geolocated. So when you're within mm-hmm. the vicinity of the beer fest, mm-hmm. that it'll give you a, a kind of a different interface because it works a little different than right. the standard. And then, yeah, it's same concept, though. It would still tell you what they have available and then... You can decide whether or not it's worth standing in line for 35 minutes. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, and I mean, you know, thankfully I, I, I've never had that experience myself. Yeah. But, you know, I've had plenty of those experiences where... It must I, have been I, a real popular beer. I had yeah. it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was pumpkin spice something. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but so, um, you know, on the next segment of, of our interview here is uh, is your, your, your first beer memory. Um, and basically, you know, like I explained to you before, you know, this is a... Your first memory that's to me is is memorable you know yeah. um everybody has different ones and things like that but you know you coming from not necessarily the brewing end the you know like how we typically interview those people you coming from more of the the, the tech end and app development and things like that and developing this app what what is your first beer memory it's a tough one because I'm pretty sure that I started drinking beer at like 15. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, no police listen. To yeah. That. <laughs> um. Yeah, that the first beer memory would be would probably be at a at a high school party, and the reason why it was a a good memory was because I was high school sweetheart, mm-hmm. and and that was also the first time that I had beer was with her. Mm-hmm. And so, and now for that reason, I can never drink Coors Light. But <laughs> I, I can never drink Coors Light to begin with. So you're, you're ahead yeah. of me there. <laughs> but yeah, but it was a, um, it wasn't, it was more of a kickback than a party. It wasn't like a huge mm-hmm. thing. It was just a few friends and, and I had that beard and I've kind of ever since associated that beard to that time in my life, mm-hmm. which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I'm a little resentment about it, but you know, yeah, it's it usually how those things go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but but yeah, but I think that if I never took that sip, I don't know that I would ever have gotten to where I am now. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like they say, beer is an acquired taste. I think it's a trained taste. It, it is. It, it's not acquired. <laughs> yeah. you, you you get trained on it. <laughs> well, that's really good. So now now comes the fun part of the interview. Okay, now comes the, the last segment that I didn't really tell you about. Okay. okay, and this is uh, the hot spot Uh-oh. segment. Okay, <laughs> um, <laughs> don't be too scared; it's easy. All right, so uh, now I'd like to open the mic up to you. Okay, and I'd like for you to tell me something completely random. Um, something completely random. Well, on the subject of these shirts, mm-hmm. when I was in high school, I took four screen printing classes. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I and still it was don't, awesome. still don't understand how that process works. It was a completely different <laughs> process then because it was early 2000s. Yeah, that's when you had to actually do the old ink yep. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so now when I get shirts printed, 
every time I go to someone to get shirts printed, they try to explain to me. I'm like, I know. I like, know. I, I've done all of this. You're talking about the, the process choir right hasn't here, really dude. changed that much. <laughs> like, so I know more than you do. It's fine. I just don't have the time to do it. <laughs> well, very good. So I, first of all, I wanted to thank you that uh, you, you took the time. I know it's been a little difficult for yeah, us to, little, get, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to get us squared up here. But, um, you know, I, I, honestly, I, I learned a lot about not only the app, uh, because I, I, I really couldn't find it. And I thought it wasn't even available. Yeah. Um, but now that I know it's available, now I just have to dig through a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to, to, to use the app. And um, I had a buddy of mine, because uh, I went on one on a website and it said it was only available on iOS. Uh-huh. I think that may have been your older website. Maybe, because it's changed since I talked to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I um, I had a buddy of mine, because I'm, I'm on Android, so uh-huh. he had an iPhone. I said, well, see if you can find it. And he was like, it's not on there. I'm yeah. like, what is going on with this app? You also... <laughs> So, um, and I don't know why it's like this, and I may try to fix it, but it has to be one word, mm-hmm. so no space between beer and thirty. Uh, okay, and like otherwise it doesn't show up at all. I'm like, but well, both words that, that, are there. That, so that may be I mean. where <laughs> the issue is, because because I, I I guarantee you I was I was typing into. So I have to figure out how words. to get around that, and I they have keywords, and in there I have beer space thirty, so it should still show up. But yeah, that's weird though. Yeah, but you know may, maybe you just need more people searching it. Yeah, maybe. So maybe this will help. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> we're going to do our, our small little part. Yeah. Now, is there anything through this whole entire interview that, um, that, that something I may have missed that you wanted to add on to or something that you want to just tell our listeners about? I don't think so. So an important note is the website is beer30.co. Mm-hmm. Beer30.com is something completely different. Right. Uh, it's very few dot coms available these days. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and it is available on Android. Mm-hmm. Uh, iOS will be available whenever mm-hmm. Apple decides that I'm worthy of their App Store. <laughs> Bow down. Yeah. <laughs> Bow down to the Apple. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, and the if there's ever any questions, comments, concerns, I can reach that connect at beer thirty dot co. Okay. Uh, that email goes directly to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Now, uh, you're on social media, obviously. Yes. Okay. Uh, on Instagram, it's beer 30 app. On Twitter, I believe it's also beer 30 app. You should know that. Yeah. You I've, should know well, that. I've changed it. <laughs> <laughs> you should have written that down yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I, I know for a fact on Twitter, it's beer 30 app. I don't remember if I got beer 30 on Instagram or not. Okay. But either one, I mean, okay. I'll go create both of them now, so it doesn't there, matter. There you go. There you go. Just <laughs> e- even if it's not right, you can change it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what that? What did I say in that interview? Yeah. So, so now we know where to find you. Yep. Now we know how to download your app, and now we know quite a bit more about you. Okay. So, yeah. I, I, first, I just want to thank you for coming on and uh, and, you and taking me. your time, and 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 hopefully we can help you get this 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 thing developed out. Yeah, and, I think it's going to be good for. And then I can say that I sat down with a millionaire. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's we'll do it again point, after right? I make millions. There you go. There yeah. you go. But I'll ask for a loan next time. Yeah, that's fine. Like, remember back when remember? we did that first we, we interview? We helped you. I'm pretty sure you got 30 downloads off yep. of us. So can I get maybe? <laughs> Throw me a bone. <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank you, and, uh, and, and hopefully we'll be hearing big things from you, man. Awesome. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jack, for bringing us this story. If you want more information on Jack or his guest, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash podcast. If you are interested in being a correspondent or a guest blogger for us here at Great Beer Adventure, you're in luck. We are starting a couple of new programs over on our platform that are looking for just those type of folks. It makes for a really great excuse to go out and talk to cool people while drinking beer. We are looking for some very specific formats and have all the information laid out on a few lovely PDFs. Reach out to me at amanda at greatbeeradventure.com and I'll send them right over to you. Next week is episode 100. We have made it to the triple digits, folks. Woo! For this milestone, I hand over the hosting reins to none other than Tim Bissell of Nice Brewing. Be sure to tune in to hear how it all goes down. Until then, get out there and try something new. Chat soon, friend.